Hello everybody, John here and today on to the garage we're having a look at the shredder after nine years of use. It's a very cold Lincolnshire day, beautiful sky though. Seagulls are going mad. So plenty of background noise. Been doing some pruning, if you can call it pruning when it's that big, of oh, some of the trees just before they start to come into any leaf to make things easy for myself. And we've got a lot of fir tree style stuff as well, knocking around. So time to bring the shredder out of hibernation tucked away in its corner there. So give me a minute, I'll get it out. Here she is, it's a Bosch AXT 25 TC with the turbine cut system, very important. And <clears throat> this will be its ninth year in use. And I genuinely believe, as you'll have seen on previous videos, that this is the best domestic use um, shredder that you can buy. To the extent that it could definitely be used for light commercial work. The source of its magic, if it has any, is this, a cone-shaped cutter, grinder, call it what you like, uh, rather than a, a, a thrashing wheel with a big rotating machete. It's using a really good motor, strong gearbox, and that to cut, to shear through and grind through and chew through uh, most wood rather than a lot of uh, cheaper domestic shredders or impact shredders and they have a rotating blade like on a, a fly mow maybe that gets some speed and a run up and bang hits the debris that it's trying to chew. Um, as you can see it, does, it genuinely doesn't get um, any special treatment. Every time I start it up at the, at the beginning of a season I give it a bit of a brush over and probably its biggest treat is liberal use of WD-40 or any other light oil just to make sure I was going to get a different can. There we go. Just to make sure that nothing seizes up. And it's good to put a bit of light lube on the interface between the cutting cone and this sloped aluminium plate here that it cuts against. Um, and as long as they stay free, then the machine should give you good service. I'm not going to go mad on making it look pretty because as soon as I've finished I'll be using it. So no false drama going on here. This is genuinely me getting ready to use this for the first time of the season and assuming she can start up. Let's get rid of some of the cobwebs. This loader feeder hopper is not an active item. <clears throat> it just prevents you from getting your hands anywhere near the cutting cone and gives you something to guide longer items into the blade. It's also a interface with the safety systems. So 
<coughs> needs to be in place before she'll start up. Just check the hopper in case anything's climbed in. No, we've run a few spiders again. Let's get the cable uncoiled. Plug that in. And then we'll see if she goes. There's a green flashing light. And a green solid light. That's great. Green button starts or goes forward. The red button stops it. And the yellow button is backwards. But if you're going forwards, then the yellow button just stops it and then in the next push it goes the other way so the controls are very straightforward now one of the things you have to do with these to keep them in good nick is use this knob on the side and what it does is it moves this aluminium plate which touches the blades into closer contact with the blades and the blades are very hard and they will cut the aluminium and make a, a really good surface. So you've got intimate contact between blade and aluminium. And that's where some of your shearing action is going to come from. So this in effect is like sharpening the blade. And all I do is push it in, give it a turn, one click and let it run. And you are looking to generate a little bit of swarf in the bottom tray. So let's try that. To aluminium coming out of there. So that was three clicks or notches on the button, which is about a quarter of a revolution, I would say. And oh, there we are. Let's you see, we have removed a significant amount of aluminium from the cutter plate. Let's have another little peep under here. There we are. Now, what looks like a rough edge on the blade here is just aluminium, but it's cut from this plate at the point where it makes contact with it just a little bit further down. So that has now got a really good close contact with this piece and the tips of the blades have in effect been lightly burnished. You can see this is what stops the hopper from coming off when you turn the red handle that comes back towards us and locks it in place. Putting this back on but there are two hooked feet in those two holes at the front then I've got to lift that black flap, like so, bring that down, and then just tighten this red thing that brings that 
hook into place. That won't come off. And then we've got this pusher that fits there. Place for your secateurs. And that's it. So, let's get on and do a bit of shredding. And I'll give you my opinion on how it's working after nine years. And review the pros and cons of this undoubtedly expensive machine. Here's the branches. I'm going to start off by feeding it, just to give you a bit of scale in my hand. They're about a little over an inch, inch and a quarter diameter, about 30 to 35 millimeters, I would say. And yeah, we'll just get them going. Well, that's all of the branches gathered up on a single load. I'll show you inside the hopper. That's the sort of chippings it produces. The hopper's just about the right size because <clears throat> it's big enough that it doesn't get in your way and become irritating but you're changing it every few seconds but not so big you can't pick it up let's move on to a few fur branches okay so this is a much tougher challenge sort of varied between under one inch up to about two inch diameter trunks 
and greenery. And as we said, the turbine cut system is not as effective on the green as it is on dry wood, but it's still very capable. Um, all that happens is you have to use the pusher a little bit more often to get things moving. But this will be a good indication of the sort of size of things you can push through no problem. So let's start big. I think that on its own is enough for me to say this is the best DIY shredder money can buy. That's what it does with evergreens. So there we have it. Nine years on, still giving excellent service. Let's do the quick rundown on the pros and cons. Cons. Um, I think the biggest con for me as a user is the wheels are too narrow. That way, the axle is too narrow and when you drag it along leaning back it wobbles around like crazy so it's always about to tip over and that's partly because it's narrow at the base but it's also because it's got this rather heavy motor and gearbox up here it's sort of a inevitability of the design so it, it it's portable but it's not as convenient as you might imagine it's quite heavy and it doesn't really pack down very much. So you get you can take this uh, top unit off and store that separately, which brings it down to there. So it's still quite a bulky thing to store, but meh, I'm, I'm really whinging for no reason there. I would like the flex that came with it to be a little longer. There may be some sort of legislation that says devices of a certain nature you can only have a flex that is a particular length. But yeah, it's where I am, where I'm using it, it means that there's always a need for an extension lead rather than sometimes. And yeah, the, the elephant in the room is this is not the cheapest machine when you compare it to other options on the market in the DIY home user market. It's cheap for a commercial machine, but it's probably not quite um, powerful enough or big enough capacity here or here for real heavy commercial use. So it sits in that middle ground of um, rather an expensive item for the home user. But I've had it nine years. My neighbours had four various uh, shredders in the same period, um, most of them impact uh, shredders and they've all fallen to pieces or broken down or he's just lost faith with them. Um, this I wouldn't dream of changing. So actually it turned out good value for money. What's the pros? The pros are that this is genuinely capable of grinding up pretty thick wood. It chips it down nice and fine. The jams on dry wood are so few I can't really remember. I did do an experiment once trying to put a four inch piece of wood and a little bit of a mod up here and it did stall the motor but then uh, I wound it backwards went forwards and it still ate it so on dry wood it is absolutely fantastic on greenery as you've seen occasionally you have to pull stuff back and get it going again just because it's softer 
and I think cramming into this small mouth uh, is what jams it. It certainly doesn't jam the blade. I don't have to send it anywhere for service or maintenance. It's pretty maintenance free other than what I showed you at the beginning of this video. It doesn't fill me with fear to use. It feels like a very safe uh, machine where I'm well protected from everything. I'm not searching around for something to ram into this because I've got that. And you know, this is not damaged, partly because it doesn't get used that often and it's just well designed so that it can't get anywhere where it's gonna get ruined. The Bosch brand for me is a bonus because I like Bosch stuff. I've had good experience with most of it. And yeah, just the number one is endurance. This has done what I asked year after year after year. So I really don't have anything else to add other than I genuinely believe this is the best shredder for domestic use money can buy. Hope you found that useful, guys. I'll give you another report in another two years, I hope. Um, and I imagine it'll be quite similar. I don't see this thing giving up, despite being stored in a cold, damp, drafty British shed all year round and only dragged out when I need it. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel to grow and get noticed on YouTube. And as the weather starts to change, I'll show you a few of my other garden toys that um, I love and use. I, I enjoy researching and finding the best product and in many cases I feel I found it. See ya! If you're enjoying our channel then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.